Good morning, Movie Buffs! Today is an exciting day for the channel. We are introducing another superstar of action, muscles, and a voice that if you heard it in person will instantly make you pregnant. Welcome to the channel, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Jesus, you're gonna kill that guy! Of course, I'm a Terminator. I suppose nothing hurts you. Only pain. Hey, are you gonna pay for that? Talk to the hand. Come on, man. Let's party. Give us the girl or we'll take her. Enough talk. Into the boat. Into the tunnel. Get to the chopper! You did not make it, Victor. We are. We're married. See that a divorce. Hello, cutie pie. One of us is in deep trouble. Pregnant. It might be a tumor. It's not a tumor. It's not a tumor at all. Yeah, today we're going to be watching a highly requested and personal favorite of mine, the 1985 movie Commando. So buckle the hell up and let off some steam because this is Red Eye Reviews. We start with this dude in bed. He hears the garbage truck outside and like he's just so passionate about garbage that he runs out to meet them and they dominate him. Dude, separate recycling maybe won't happen again. Also, I'm not a pro killer or well, I'm not a killer at all. But if I did own a garbage truck and felt a bit murdery, I would put the body in the truck, right? Like, that's a no-brainer. It's what all the pros do on those murder mystery shows, so maybe take a note. I like Cadillacs. You like Cadillacs? Well, come right around here, brother, and get in this Cadillac. We cut across town, and that same guy is testing a car. The price. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I mean, I've said it before. Cars have a thing called a VIN number. Uh, pretty sure the cops will find this car pretty easily, but he kills the dude trying to sell it to him, so maybe that's what he was trying to do. Okay, hold on. What what the hell is happening? Are you the Flash? How are you teleporting all over town, sir? We will learn soon enough, but for now, let's cut over to... Oh, yeah, that's what's up. Look at that sweaty little sexy arm butt thing he's got going on. He's carrying an entire tree. Why? We don't know. Who knows? That's what's so cool. So this is Arnold, a.k.a. Colonel Matrix, which is an incredible name. I, yeah, I don't think I've heard of a better name than Colonel Goddamn Matrix. But he lives here with his daughter, played by Alyssa Milano, who said while filming, Arnold was like basically a dad to her. Very protective, very kind, and in her own words, quote, he even helped me with my algebra homework, end quote. They do make a pretty cute little family. Whoa, okay, no, well, I, I said cute. You, you can't teach your kid to feed a wild deer, buddy. Dude, those things got ticks, like, just covered in Lyme disease. So his old boss shows up and is like, Excuse me, my dude, but someone's killing all of your old teammates, and they might be coming for you next. And Arnold's like, all right, whatever, I'll just leave a couple of guys. Leave a couple of guys, I'll be fine. That's not bad. So they leave. <laughs> and like, when they leave, immediately they get attacked. Like, the helicopter is still in the air nearby. Say what you want, but these bad guys are punctual. They're downwind. The air turned. They tipped them off. You think I could smell them coming? I did. And Arnold can smell them. But, you know, what are you, you Wolverine now? Maybe this is a superhero movie. Maybe that is The Flash. So Arnold asks his daughter to hide. He goes to the shed to get a gun. His safe code is 1-3. That's it. Like, well, why even have a code? Whatever. He comes back to kick some ass, and it's too late. God damn, dude. How, how long were you in that shed? They ran inside, took your daughter, killed that dude, drove all the way down the hill, and disabled your truck. Maybe show some urgency next time. 
I had to pump a few reps in the shed. So Arnold says, screw it. And he just pushes his broken truck down the hill and attempts to drive it that way. And it's weird because here he is passing them, right? But then at the next turn, he passes them again. Who designed these roads? We don't know. How slow were you driving just now? Like, none of it makes sense. But he crashes. He gets taken captive. Do you remember me, Colonel? Nice mesh vest, bro. I know some nightclubs where you would be very popular. But meet Bennett. One of his old teammates turned evil. And he took Arnold's daughter to force him to go on a mission. Uh, kill, like, a politician and... Yeah. Sorry, I'm I'm really distracted here. Are we just going to pretend that this is chain mail? You just got like a certain look about you. You're like, you're like Freddie Mercury on steroids or something. I, I don't know. But he's supposed to go on this mission, okay? They offered me a hundred grand. When I found out I'd get my hands on you, I said I'd do it for nothing. Okay, well, that just makes you a bad businessman. So these dudes take him to the plane for this mission. And first class looked really shitty back in the 80s. That's first class? No, thank you. But he learns the flight to kill this politician will last 11 hours. And he's like, hell nah, I am not sitting next to this dude for 11 hours. I didn't even bring a Game Boy. It's your film. Your flight attendants are Susan and Lance, and I'm Bennett. Straight murks that dude. <laughs> like, so bad. And he just puts a blanket on him and a hat, and then he finds a way off the plane. No way in hell. <laughs> How fast was that plane moving? It's fast enough to fly, and you land in like, what, three feet of swamp water? Actually, fun fact, they tested this over on Mythbusters. Let's take a look. No, of course they didn't test this. He would be dead. <laughs> also, uh, that's my first Rick roll on the channel, so uh, they deal with it. But he lives because he lands on his gluteus maximus muscles, and they, they're functioning like little ripply airbags or something. But he knows now he has 11 hours before they learn he isn't on that plane. Unless they find the dead person and they turn the plane around to land it back, then he's screwed. So let's hope that doesn't happen. Yeah, the bird's flown. Gracias, Sully. Dude, it's, it's a shirt made of yarn. I'm sorry, you're even wearing real chain right above it? Who are you kidding? Sorry. So, Arnold follows this other bad guy out of the airport. That guy's a scumbag. He hits on this girl. Arnold sees that. He somehow gets the two confused. Don't move. I'm not going to hurt you. No, Arnie, wrong person, dude. You want him. This is the, this is the lady. Don't mess her car up. That mistake's on you. But not really. He's actually asking her to follow the bad guy in her car, and he tore her seat out to, the, I guess, sit lower in the car. Or not. He's not, even, he's not even hiding. I guess you just wanted to mess her car up to show that you could? Or you're so tall that you didn't think you'd fit in the car? Yeah, a guy I trusted for years wants me dead. It's understandable. I've only known you for five minutes, and I want you dead, too. That's a great line. Also... This is Cindy. She's played by Ray Don Chong. And the director said that she actually nailed her first audition and was offered the job literally on the spot. And she said, quote, I knew Arnold would make the film a hit and I wanted to be a part of that, end quote. Yeah, girl, I'm with you. Who wouldn't? So they follow him to a meeting at the mall. And another fun fact, because we're just full of them today, this is the Sherman Oaks Galleria. This is the same mall used in Terminator 2, Judgment Day. Little bit of trivia there. But while waiting for the bad guy, Cindy rats out Arnold for kidnapping her, and the mall cops take their jobs way too goddamn seriously, and they pick a fight with him. My god, you all are so screwed. Dude, that is Conan! Get out of his goddamn way. 
So he and Cindy chase after the bad guy. Why is Cindy coming? That is a great question. She will be a part of the rest of this movie and literally does not need to be involved. But whatever. They give chase. They flip his car and slam into a pole themselves. Oh, good God. Are you two dead? There's no airbags. Also, slow it down. Uh, Cindy's head pops off right here. <laughs> if, you, if you look. Uh, sorry, Cindy. I guess you're dead. But she's fine. He finds a hotel key on this dude. He drops him off a cliff. He's dead. Remember, Sally, when I promised to kill you last? I lied. And then he heads to that hotel. Oh, okay, I'll be technical. Motel. They hang out inside, and the Flash shows up. And this must be weird, right? Like, shouldn't you guys be fighting the Predator together? Is she the Predator? Wait, hold on. Had that movie happened yet? No. Two more years. Okay, I'm sorry, but soon the two of you are going to be best friends. So they fight. Arnold kills him. He lands on a pointy thing, which is like the ultimate bad guy death. But now, if we are to go raid the bad guy's base where they are holding his daughter, we need more guns. Yeah, that was cool. Did you did you try the door? I think alarms still existed in the 80s, so I think the cops are showing up, uh, just saying. So they go and they steal, like, everything they could find there's like a pair of flippers screw it take those like they're just looting at this point they're like a kid who was given five minutes to grab as much shit as they could at a toys r us ah, i wish i was that kid cindy goes to the car with the gear and the cops do show up because uh duh and arnold gets arrested where did you learn how to do that I read the instructions. She read the instructions? Okay, uh, sure she did. Oh, shit. No, okay, there they are, yeah. Wow, uh, I take that back. She did read the instructions. My mistake. We cut to little Ginny Matrix, and she's still stuck in a room. Ooh, that's exciting stuff over there. <laughs> cut back to Arnold and Cindy, who are stealing a plane. Oh, shit. <laughs> And the guards drove off a pier. You had one job. Guard the planes and don't drive the jeep into the ocean. So they fly away. Also, Cindy's a pilot. So I guess, okay, I guess she technically is finally useful. Good on you, Cindy. Don't break radio silence until they see me. Ooh, damn. Oh, whew. Put that picture on my teenage bedroom wall. I don't care how straight you are. You, you would. You totally would. With that, are you kidding? Jesus Christ, let's move on. And now Arnold begins his assault, and it's glorious. Like, he runs around, he just puts claymores all over the place like they're goddamn Easter eggs. Come stop. Shooting dudes without even looking. The guy is untouchable. And man, they really cannot aim, like, at all. Oh, well, that's why. Uh, excuse me, army, your soldiers appear to be mannequins. Maybe hire people instead of statues. Mystery solved, Sherlock, but for real, it's like 10 minutes of just straight visual steroids. At one point, he's in a shed. They shoot that shed like it insulted their mama. And where's Arnold? Where, where is he? He's in the roof. No one even shot up there. Not one time did they shoot up there. He throws like a lawnmower blade at this dude, takes his scalp off, cuts this guy's arm off. It's insane. If you want to watch this movie, watch it just for this scene at the very least. But we also learn that little Ginny has escaped and she's running through some like underground passageway thing that was in every 80s movie ever. Okay, dude, I suspect you're going to die soon anyway, so, like, just, just tell me. Did your wife crochet that vest for you? I just need to know why you felt the need to wear it. 
I have only one arm. You can beat me. I want Bennett. Go away, that chicken shit gun. And they fight each other. And boy, oh boy, do they fight. I gotta kill you now! They fight a bit over there, a bit over here. At one point, this happens. <laughs> Who the hell installed an electric fence with so much voltage in a wet underground tunnel? Screw you, that's who. It's awesome. We don't need to explain ourselves. And then it finally ends when Arnold throws a pipe into his stomach and steam erupts out of it. Where did that steam come from? Who knows? Who cares? The movie's over. Everyone's safe. And for those of you that were expecting me to play some of Arnold's best quotes in the movie... Don't you worry. Oh, I'll feed you, baby birds. So let's head on over to Red Eye Reacts. What's in this? You don't want to know. <laughs> oh, wait, what? Now I really want to know. What the hell did you put in that sandwich? What's in this? Is that licorice or lipstick? This one has gum, I think, and it's my favorite part. You've made enemies all over the world, John. It could have been the Syrians, the South Americans, the Russians. That, uh, that one guy who threw an egg at you in California? Well, this guy owes me bacon now. I mean, there's no two ways about it because, I mean, you can't just have eggs without bacon. There's a guy over here that may be a wacko. I'll be right there. Want to see me kick some ass? <laughs> all right, here's the moment we've all been waiting for. My four favorite Arnold moments from the movie. Green Beret's going to kick your big ass. I eat Green Beret's for breakfast. Fuck you, asshole. Fuck you, asshole. Come on, Bennett. Let's party. <laughs> Let off some steam, Bennett. That was everything. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Arnold Schwarzenegger, welcome to the channel. Subscribe if you want to. Uh, like the video, hit the bell to get reminded. Leave some comments. Have you ever done Arnold's voice? God damn, it's fun. Has your arm ever been so big it looks like a sweaty little butt? We'll answer all these questions next time, and until then, stay happy and stay healthy.